Hey guys, welcome back to Paint Every Day. Today, we're going to be painting Captain America like the movies for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Alright, so while we're putting on the first base coat on Cap, I want to explain a little bit more about this series. I just got the Marvel Crisis Protocol game and I really like the models. The only thing I don't really like is the comic color schemes and influences. So I decided to show you guys how to paint your Marvel Crisis Protocol miniatures in the color schemes and styles from the movies rather than the comics. This involves less dramatic highlights, darker more muted tones, weathering, etc. Uh, I'm going to be showing you guys all this and more today. Alright, enough of that, let's get right into it. I proceeded by blocking in all the base colors for all the different areas of the model. And here I actually decided to go to a uh, darker blue rather than the lighter blue that I started with because I figured that I could always make the blue a bit lighter with highlights but it would be a lot harder to make it darker so I figured the combination between this darker blue and uh, the wash should make it dark enough and then I can start highlighting from there. And here we're actually going to paint out the shield in uh, silver, just plain metallic silver, true metallic. I'm using some plate mail metal for this and you'll see why later but this will turn into a nice metallic effect without having to do non-metallic metal. Alright, so now I'm putting on an all over blue wash on all the blue areas of the model. Um, I'm not sure you really need to wash any of the other surfaces, um, maybe besides the leather which I washed later, um, but just the blue because it's got all those little nooks and crannies in the folds of the fabric and stuff. The rest of the stuff, it's just mostly just flat details, so those, you can probably just leave out the wash there. And now we're starting the process of highlighting all the blue. So for the highlighting, I um, took some tricks out of Ninjon's book, and if you haven't seen it, I go recommend uh, looking at his miniature painting tips uh, video. It was really helpful to me, and in that video he talks about using really thin layers of paint, and I've tried it, and I can say that it really works, and I use it on this model, and it's uh, gave me a really good and smooth highlight. So I'm just taking that time uh, because this is like a unique model, it's not like a troop in the army, I'm taking a lot of time just to 
uh, you know, highlight all those raised areas with very thin paint, doing a lot of layers, and just going all over with slowly building up the color. And uh, another disclaimer, I'm not um, building up the contrast too much, so not going too bright uh, with the highlights, and that will make it uh, a little bit more realistic. Um, and as well, here I'm just washing, putting a wash on the face. This is just flesh wash from Army Painter. Alright, so now we're taking some of that blue wash that we used earlier, and we're just glazing it on to the blue areas of the shield. Um, this will just create a really nice uh, blue metallic effect, and so we don't have to do non-metallic metal. Okay, so I didn't have a red wash on hand, so I decided to try it with some just normal acrylic paint thinned down with water and a little bit of flow enhancer, but it wasn't really working, it was kind of smudging all over, uh, and it was kind of just really splotchy, did not look good. So I decided to uh, go another route, which you could take if you don't have a blue wash either, and mix uh, a bit of silver paint with a bit of red paint, and to create kind of like a... Uh, reddish paint with the metallic uh, little flecks in it. So I uh, tried that out and it seemed to work out pretty well. So um, that looks good. And I might actually use that on Iron Man as well. Um, it's kind of the right color too. So uh, yeah, that works out well. And you can definitely take that opportunity if you don't have um, washes like me to glaze with. And in similar fashion to uh, the blue, we are just highlighting his face and picking out all those raised details. And like I said earlier, I'm just using some strong tone dark brown wash on all the leather areas. and then the highlights for the leather. Alright, so we have come pretty far on this model, and it, I have to say it's looking really good. Um, but one thing I wanted to add to it is the comic book version looks very, you know, clean and neat and colorful. So to add a bit more realism and make this uh, character more like the movies, um, I was thinking about doing some weathering on, just some basic, basic weathering on... Uh, just some areas of the model. So I'm thinking about using some of this, where is it? Uh, here it is. Some soft tone on the white. It's like a bra light brown wash. And uh, that might be make me able to wipe it away, sort of like an oil wash, but hopefully it smears a bit more and adds sort of like a dirty texture to it. Um, if you have any pigments, um, those might be helpful for this step too. And yeah, that's about it. Um, I also added some scratches. I'm not sure if you can see that. To the leather, just to uh, add some more realism. And I think that's about all you can do with this model as far as weathering, but yeah, it's coming along pretty well. So I'm going to try that out.
and I also added some scratches to the shield. For the base, I decided to go with a pretty simple paint job, uh, nothing special here. Um, so I just uh, started with a base coat of dark gray. I think I'm using uniform gray from Armored Hater for this. Um, and I just layered that on, two thin coats, and then I put on a wash, a dark wash, dark tone, also from Army Painter. Um, and using the same technique I used for the weathering with the soft tone, I'm just using a Q-tip and wiping away um, the wash out of all the flat surfaces. Um, and yeah, this creates a, uh, it basically just saves, saves me some time from highlighting and I have to highlight all those big flat surfaces. I can just rub away all the wash that that's on the like where I would highlight uh, so that saved me a lot of time and that was just really efficient so that's a good strategy uh, another reason I made the base so uh, simple is just because I wanted to be able to replicate it across all the models to kind of tie them together and give them a cohesive look when they're on the battlefield together Alright, that's it for today. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and hopefully you can be satisfied with your color scheme no matter what you chose. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video in this series. Make sure to turn on that notification bell as well. Okay, that's all from me. See you next time. In the meantime, do yourself a favor and paint every day.